Ever since he could remember, Jonathan wanted to be a knight. In the orphanage where he lived, he would always find little pieces of wood and pretend they were swords. Of course he had to do this in secret, because if any of the adults caught him in the act of playing a knight, he'd be beaten. The only thing that he was supposed to do was sleep, eat, and pray. But every night he dreamt of what it would be like to be a knight. He dreamt of riding off on his white stallion to save the damsel in distress, or fighting off monsters to save the king. He knew that it was his destiny, and that's why at the age of 12, he ran away from the orphanage in seek of the king of Bolivia. Along the way, he met many different people and told them of his journey. Most people told him he was crazy and he should just go back to the orphanage, but man, one man was different. He was a farmer, and he gave Jonathan some food and a place to sleep for the night. When he awoke, the farmer started to tell him about his journey and how he tried to be a knight. He never succeeded, but he saw the fire in the boy and thought Jonathan could do what he could not. He dusted off an old so small sword and gave it to the boy. If he wanted to be a knight, he needed a weapon. And like that, Jonathan was off, sword at his hip, ready for any demons that await. But along the road, the only thing the blade tasted was tree leaves and stem flowers. When Jonathan finally arrived at the gates of the kingdom, he was amazed at what he saw. Roads filled with people, massive buildings everywhere. He was amazed. He lived on an isolated farm in the orphanage and had never seen cities like this. He was in awe. Everything was what he expected and more. He ran through the streets, excited to find the king and enlist as a knight. When he reached the castle, his jaw dropped. The sheer size of it was massive, with large turrets at every corner and archers surrounding the walls. Even looking at the castle guards, he had never seen that many people in one place. But as he tried to walk into the castle, the guards stopped him. Halt! What business do you have with the king? I am here to be a knight, my good sir, replied Jonathan. Ha! You a knight? I think not. Go back to the farm where you came from, peasant. After arguing for a while, Jonathan knew there was no way he was getting into the castle that way. He had to find another way in. He devised a plan to make a diversion. He went up to the merchant stands and pretended to drop some money. As he went down to pick it up, he knocked down some gunpowder off the table. Once he had that, he threw it into a torch and created a large explosion. Once he made it to the king, he knelt down and said, My liege, I am here to pledge my allegiance to you and become a knight. Ha! You? A knight? Please, go back to your farm before I have the guards drag you out of here, said the king. Jonathan thought for a moment. He needed some way to prove he was able to be a knight. Give me a quest, and I'll prove to you that I can be a knight, your highness. The king pondered on this, and finally drew a grin on his face. Okay, boy. If you would like a quest... The princess has been taken by a dragon who is now in a cave in the hills. Find her and bring her back, and I shall knight you, young boy. With that, Jonathan was off, eager to start his quest. As he left, one of the guards leaned over to the king. You know no one has come back from that quest, right? Yes, but he doesn't, the king said with an evil grin. After a few days, Jonathan finally found the cave of the dragon. He drew his sword, took a deep breath, and entered the cave. Everywhere around the cave there were bones of every animal. The cave bellowed as the dragon snorted. Finally, he found the princess. She was locked in the cage connected to a stalactite. Jonathan noticed many ledges spiraling around the cave. He started to climb until he was level with the cage. If he jumped, he was just able to reach the cage. It would be a long shot, but he had to do it. As he backed up a couple steps, he jumped as far as he could. He smashed straight into the cave, waking the princess. Luckily, Jonathan was able to catch his hand on a beam. The princess got up and looked to see what the sound came from. She was still wearing the dress she had worn when she was abducted, but only now it was all dirty and in tatters. But apart from all that, her long brown hair was still perfect. Jonathan told her he was here to rescue her and bring her back to the kingdom. He climbed up one side of the cage and used his sword to break the lock that was on the cage. The sound of the lock breaking woke the dragon. Its head reared back and almost knocked the cage down. Jonathan grabbed the princess and jumped onto the dragon's head. He stuck his sword into the dragon's head and slid down its neck. They both jumped off the dragon's back and ran for the exit. The dragon chased them as they ran, closing in fast. Jonathan turned around and threw his sword under the chin of the dragon. It threw his head up in pain as the sword cut its skin. As the dragon's head hit the roof of the cage, all the stalactites started to fall. Jonathan was able to push out the princess just in time before the cave crumbled. Outside the cave, you could still hear the roars of the dragon still trying to get out. Jonathan brought the princess back to the kingdom and gave her back to the astounded king. The king swallowed his pride and offered his daughter's hand in marriage to Jonathan, but he denied. All he wanted was to become a knight. And after that day, he started his journey to becoming a knight.